Porsche's Macan is an SUV with the soul and the engineering of a sports car. You might expect it to be fast and family friendly. More of a surprise is that it's rewarding and with the right spec, very nearly race ready in its responses. Yet it'll comfortably take you off road, deal with the school run and cruise down to Chamonix. It's very special. Lots of unlikely models have been described as sports cars over the years. Estates, people carriers, crossovers, even off-roading 4x4s. In truth, of course, the real thing is very different. Is this it? Welcome to the Porsche Macan. Its maker describes it as the first sports car in the compact SUV segment. Of all brands, Porsche should know just what a claim that is to make about a model that weighs nearly two tonnes, is over 1.6 metres in height, and must be engineered to tackle the Rubicon Trail as well as the racetrack. Now, if you've ever driven the company's larger KN SUV, you'll know that an awful lot is possible with this kind of car. But inevitably, there are always limits. With the Macan, Porsche was always determined to stretch them and create the ultimate multitasker. A car as ready for a circuit as it would be for a skiing trip. Classy enough for the streets of Monte Carlo, soundly sensible on the school run, quietly capable on the rough stuff and potentially manic around Monza. The company is certainly well positioned to create such a thing, claiming the whole sporting all-wheel drive car concept as their own invention. Back in 1900, Ferdinand Porsche designed the Loner Porsche racing model with its four electric wheel hub motors. Now, by 1947, the brand was going further, developing a supercharged 12-cylinder Type 360 Sissitala Grand Prix racer that introduced the concept of full four-wheel drive. For all that, though, the Stuttgart maker has never made a car quite like this. Perhaps that's why it initially turned to Volkswagen Group partner Audi with the early idea of basing this car on that company's similarly sized Q5. It wasn't long into the development process, though, that Porsche decided it knew better. It alone could create the kind of compact sporting SUV that models like the Q5, Range Rovers Evoque and the BMW X4 could never be. So almost everything was reinvented. Almost everything was reimagined. Almost everything was different. As this car is from just about everything else in its segment. Let's put it to the test. So what might the self-proclaimed sports car of the SUVs be like to drive? Well, in answer, I'd say that Porsche are certainly right about one thing. This Macan is certainly very different from any other model of this kind we've seen to date. Don't think Range Rover Evoque, Audi Q5 or even BMW X4. Think instead of a premium, powerful, all-wheel drive, uber-hot hatch like a Volkswagen Golf or a Mercedes A45 AMG. The change is that significant. Or at least it is in this potent turbo model, powered as it is by the bigger of the two V6 bi-turbo petrol engines offered to Macan buyers. This one, a 3.6 litre unit, putting out plenty with 400 brake horses, straining at the leash to power you from rest to 62 miles per hour in just 4.8 seconds, on the way to 165 miles an hour flat out. Even more devastating is the 30 to 70 mile per hour overtaking increment, which takes just 4.3 seconds. In other words, it's as quick as Porsche's circuit-focused Cayman sports car. And what's more surprising is that the parity also extends to the turns. Independent track tests have seen this car record lap times only a fraction slower than its Cayman stablemate. Try doing that in any other SUV. 
With this in mind, you can now begin to see why Porsche's engineers were so disinterested in simply rebadging the Audi Q5 that was always supposed to form the development basis for this car. No matter what you do to a Q5, and Audi has certainly tried hard with the SQ5 variant, it's never going to be any kind of sports car. To create the Macan, stiffer, sharper and faster reacting underpinnings were needed. Take the four-wheel drive system. The Audi Quattro setup that could easily have been used is mechanical and from Porsche's perspective doesn't react quick enough. The PTM Porsche traction management setup in contrast is electronic and in less than the blink of an eye can switch up to 100% of the torque from front to rear. It's one of the key reasons why this car is so responsive. Of course there are others, let's start with the steering. Weighty but direct, feelsome and miles better than that of the larger KN, which is itself very good. It isn't only this Macan's smaller size that makes it so much more fun and chuckable than its larger stablemate. The fizzing feedback you get through the Porsche 918 Spyder supercar steering wheel gives you such confidence that you can drive this car almost as hard as you want. You simply set it up for the bend, turn in, plant your foot and power through. Or at least you do in a model like this one, fitted with the brand's optional PTV Plus Porsche's Torque Vectoring Plus system, which works through the twisty stuff to counter both understeer and wheel spin by likely micro-braking whichever front wheel is threatening to lose grip. As a result, the car's kept planted through the tightest turns and you're fired from bend to bend. If you're driving like this, then you'll certainly want to have activated this center console sport button. This quickens the response, adds a sportier engine note and speeds up the gear shift timings of the 7-speed PDK auto transmission that all Macan models must have. As usual with the PDK system, there are two shifting gates. The conventional one on the right that uses the chromed gear selector and one that allows manual shifts. You can also deliver via the standard shift paddles on the steering wheel. Choose the optional Sport Chrono package and an additional Sport Plus option is added to that and that will sharpen your McCann's throttle and gear change timing still further. As part of this you also get a launch control system for Grand Prix style getaways that take a couple of tenths off your 0 to 62 mile per hour sprint times. And if you also shell out for the PASM, Porsche Active Suspension Management System, that adjusts the ride to suit the road you're on and of course the mood you're in, you'll be able to operate it through those same Sport and Sport Plus modes or select a laid back comfort setting. That PASM system is standard if you decide against the standard steel sprung suspension system and select instead the optional air suspension setup that potentially gives this Porsche another unique feature in its class. It's a self-leveling setup, one of the advantages of which is that there's a handy button in the luggage compartment that can lower the rear end by 50 millimeters if you've heavy items to get in or out. As for the road going advantage as well, an air sprung Macan will sit 15 millimeters closer to the ground than a steel sprung one in its normal setting, which is one of the three the driver can choose. For sporty driving requiring a lower center of gravity, you can go 10 millimeters lower than the normal benchmark by choosing the low mode, or if you're going off the beaten track, push the car 40 millimeters higher than normal by selecting the high level one setting. Ah yes, off-road driving. Now despite encouraging looking approach and departure angles of 24.8 degrees and 23.6 degrees and a ramp angle of 17.1 degrees, you wouldn't expect this to be much of a McCann strength. Which to be fair, it probably wouldn't be without the air sprung setup that I've just mentioned.
This makes all the difference, upping the potential ground clearance from the standard 198mm to as much as 230mm. So you can make the most of this. There's an off-road mode that works at up to 50 miles per hour and is activated by pushing yet another centre console button. This switches all of the relevant systems, things like gear shift, speeds, clutch pre-tensioning, throttle response and torque split to a traction oriented off-road program. And if you've got the PASM air suspension fitted, it will automatically adjust your ride height to suit the terrain level. If you're descending a steep slope, there's also the option of activating the PHC Porsche Hill Control System, a copy of Land Rover's Hill Descent Control setup, in the way it can automatically keep your speed constant on slippery inclines. The McCann owners likely to be in any way interested in this kind of capability are likely to be those most drawn to the S diesel version. If, like me, you expected this variant to use the 309 brake horsepower six-cylinder turbo unit from the Audi SQ5, you'll be disappointed. Porsche has once again done its own thing and developed a 3-liter V6 diesel for this car that gets within a fraction of the SQ5's performance, but does so with only 250 eight braked horses. 62 miles per hour from rest occupies 6.3 seconds en route to 142 miles per hour. That's one McCann S model covered. The other also uses a 3 litre V6, but this time with petrol power and bi-turbo induction that delivers 340 brake horsepower. Good enough for performance that'll get you within a whisker of this far pricier turbo variant. 62 miles per hour from rest is 5.4 seconds away en route to 157 miles per hour. And you could shave another couple of tenths off that with the optional Sport Chrono Pack fitted. It's certainly a better option than the entry level variant that hardly anyone will buy. Badged simply McCann. Here the same petrol engine is detuned to 237 brake horsepower, reducing the performance stats to 6.9 seconds and 138 miles per hour. So what exactly should a practical but potent family sports car really look like? It's difficult to think of any brand better qualified to build such a thing than Porsche, though this car's larger KN SUV stablemate has rather struggled with the concept. This McCann, though, delivers on it far more successfully. Familiar brand styling cues are plentiful, but they seem far less contrived in this case, with references not only to the KN and the 911, but also to the Stuttgart maker's supercars, past and present. Take the distinctive clamshell bonnet, unique in this segment, fashioned from pure aluminium and stretching through to the wheel arches while aiming to create the same kind of broad and powerful front end presence that characterised Porsche's Le Mans winning 917 race machine. Then there are these smart side blades along the flanks, reminiscent of those on the brand's current 918 hybrid supercar. The 918 influence, in fact, is quite prevalent in this car. You'll see it again with these imposing headlights which sit above menacing air intakes that are fitted on this turbo model with so-called C-blades that give the car a bit more overtaking presence. Subtle design touches identify the particular McCann variant that you see before you. Sport design side skirts and red brake calipers on this turbo version with silver coloured calipers on the S variant. The side profile is typically Porsche, with design creases accentuating the broad sculpted wings, the idea being that from every angle every muscle appears to be flexed, like a predator ready to pounce. That aided by the way that in an effort to improve stability and traction, this McCann gets wider tyres at the rear, just like the brand's 911 model. The roofline slopes distinctively towards the rear in a sports car style contour that aids the slippery shape. In Stuttgart, they call this the Porsche Flyline. 
even at the rear there's plenty of Porsche DNA. The idea being to create a car that looks low, wide and intimate with the road. The style is slender at the top but then widens through these neat three-dimensional LED taillights into the broad shoulders that sit above the back wheels. This apparently a homage to the brand's iconic 911 model. Now below the rear diffuser is flanked on both sides by twin tailpipes, round on the S models and square on this turbo variant. As usual though, what's more important is what lies underneath the aesthetics. And what lies beneath them, barstool experts will doubtlessly tell you, are the underpinnings of a much humbler Audi Q5. The shortcut Porsche supposedly used in creating this model. But don't believe it. Yes, this Macan does borrow around 30% of its components from the Q5. Mainly the front and rear differentials and the suspension arms. Now, given that Porsche is these days part of the Volkswagen Group, it would have been pointless to develop everything on a new car in this segment absolutely from scratch. Now, all the stuff that really matters, though, is different. This car is longer, lower and wider than its Audi cousin, and every body panel is unique, as is the basic platform, the engines and the four-wheel drive system. It's certainly different at the wheel, less like any kind of sporting SUV and more like a thoroughbred sports estate. Maybe something like a Jaguar XF or Sport Brake or a Mercedes AMG C63. Now the quality of the trim suits a car of this order too, with lovely leathers, perfect plastics and granite-like build quality from the Leipzig factory. Astonishing attention to detail too. For example, the supporting plate and guide rails of the front armrest are finished in high-tech magnesium. And if you've ticked the box for the optional Sport Chrono package, there's a lovely analog and digital stopwatch on top of the dash. Now you sit lower than you might expect in a car of this kind, much lower than you would in a KN, yet high enough for great visibility that's aided by these slender A-pillars and the wide screen. Cocooning you 911 style into your brilliantly supportive multi-adjustable leather or Alcantara trim sport seat is the button-heavy lower console section with its bank of chrome trim switches running down the transmission tunnel and creating a, a wraparound cockpit-like feel. It's anything but minimalist, but the ergonomics are difficult to fault once you adjust to the layout. In the centre of the fascia lies the usual PCM, Porsche Communications Management touchscreen infotainment system that Porsche insists on making optional lower down the range, but which almost all owners choose. And there's a proper car-shaped key to put into a proper car-shaped ignition. Ahead, the brand styling cues continue with a multifunction three-spoke sports steering wheel borrowed straight from that exotic 918 model I mentioned earlier. Now behind lie beautifully positioned paddle shifters for the PDK Auto gearbox that all Macan models must have. Now through these spokes, meanwhile, you view the three-instrument tube binnacle. That's another classic touch, with the rev counter as usual with this brand assuming central pride of place. To its right, what you might at first assume to be a supplementary dial is in fact a 4.8 inch colour screen which displays trip computer readouts, but more colourfully can also bring sat nav mapping directly into your line of sight. Time to see how this model stacks up in the rear. An issue that's of greater importance than you might at first think. A significant number of potential buyers, Porsche thinks, will be people considering this car as a more dynamic alternative to a sporting SUV from the next class up. Now this was one of the reasons why the brand didn't develop this car sooner, fear that it would steal sales from the larger KN. So if you're the sort of family person who might otherwise choose something like that, or indeed a pokey Range Rover Sport or BMW X5, will your family castigate you for cramming them into a Macan? Probably not. You'd certainly notice a bit less space for sure, but three adults can certainly fit here okay, and there's a decent amount of head and knee room. 
Here's one area in which this car is exactly the same as an Audi Q5, which isn't surprising given that its wheelbase is identical. Well, nearly identical anyway. Unfortunately, McCann buyers don't get that car sliding rear bench, something that would have been a real boon here. That would have really helped for those times when you absolutely need to maximise luggage space. And there may be a few more of those with this car than you would have had if you'd have bought the comparable Audi. This sloping rear end sees to that. It may look nice, but lift the automatically operable tailgate and you'll find that it robs the rear of crucial cubic inches. The total 500 litre capacity being 40 litres less than a Q5. It'll certainly be a lot less than you're used to if you're downsizing from one of the large sporting SUVs I just mentioned. Now having said that, we're still talking here of a space matching that of a rival BMW X4 and a cargo area a lot bigger than you'd guess in a comparable Range Rover Evoque. You'll also want this load space management system that enables you to partition the luggage space to suit your needs. Items are held in place by your rail system with a slide adjustable telescopic rod, a strap roller and four variable lashing eyelets. Plus there's a reversible boot mat that you can flip over for muddy boots. Another advantage this car enjoys over its rivals is the extra cost option it offers of an air sprung suspension system which can lower the rear end by 50 millimeters if you've heavy items to get in and out. Now if those heavy items are bulky and you need more room the rear backrest folds in a useful 40-20-40 split that means you can poke longer things through like skis without disturbing rear seat passengers. Now push the rear bench completely forward and 1,500 litre capacity is freed up, which is very class competitive. Theoretically, this car slots in below its larger KN SUV stablemate in Porsche's lineup. But given asking prices that sit in the £40,000 to £60,000 bracket, there's inevitably a little overlap between the two cars, as I'll explain. At the top of the range, this particular petrol turbo variant illustrates that, costing much the same kind of money as a similarly performing KNS. Further down the Mikan lineup, though, the S diesel variant that most buyers will want will save you around £6,000 on a comparable KN diesel. You need a budget of around £45,000 for that S diesel once you've allowed for a few well chosen extras. This is almost exactly the same kind of money you'll need to buy into the 340 brake horsepower petrol S model, so black or green pump. The choice is yours. Either way, the £3,500 premium necessary to graduate up to an S-Spec Macan from the feebler 240 brake horsepower entry level version seems like money well spent. On to the value proposition that represents and the competition this car faces. Well, not exactly this car. There's absolutely nothing of equivalent size that's quite as fast as the potent 400 brake horsepower petrol turbo version that I've been trying here. Further down the Macan range though, other premium badges will be quick to pitch you with what appear to be directly comparable alternatives. Uh, two of the most obvious ones are Audi's Q5 and BMW's X4, both of which seem cheaper because they're offered with feebler engines than Porsche bothers with uh, across the Macan lineup. Now, when you do put like against like, though, you'll find that there's surprisingly little in it. If you opt for an up-spec Q5 3.0-litre TDI Quattro, for example, and you'll be paying a Macan S diesel money, and a directly comparable BMW X4 xDrive 30D would actually cost you a couple of thousand more. It's a similar story if you've a £40,000 budget and find yourself looking at the entry-level 237 brake horsepower petrol Macan model. That's the same kind of money you'd need to spend on a well-specified Q5 2.0-litre TFSI Quattro, and it's actually slightly less than you'd need for directly comparable rivals like Volvo's XC60 T6 and the Range Rover Evoque SI4. 
yes, if you equalize the spec, you might still end up having to pay a bit more to get your Porsche on the drive. But the price penalty is marginal and will anyway probably be accounted for by higher residuals when the time comes to sell. Which is good news if it's the Porsche key fob you really want. And if so, you'll be needing to know just how generous the brand has been when it comes to standard spec. Have compromises been made in order to keep the Macan prices affordable? Not really. Now, assuming that you buy in at the S-spec level, as almost all buyers will, you can expect to find lovely 18-inch alloy wheels, an automatic tailgate, power folding heated mirrors and auto wipers. Now, inside, there's two-zone automatic climate control, Alcantara-trimmed comfort seats, and a high-quality 11-speaker CDR Plus audio system. A multifunction leather-trimmed sports steering wheel, too, with gear shift paddles for the PDK automatic gearbox that all Macan models must have. As you would expect, though, there are plenty of extra cost features. And unfortunately, these include the cruise control system, voice control system and ultrasonic alarm that I'd expect a car of this price to have a standard. Now, as for going beyond that, well, let's start with the customization, which outside is focused upon these distinctive side blades on the lower part of the doors. Now, you'll hardly notice those when specified in body color, but if you want to make them stand out, more eye-catching lava black or carbon finishes are available. Inside, it's down to how overt you want to be. For a laid-back look, you'll want the interior to be lined in leather with decor trim in elegant dark walnut veneer. Alternatively, a more dynamic theme using carbon or brushed aluminium trim can indeed be specified. Now, if you want something even more bespoke, then you'll be able to order it through the Porsche Exclusive Program. Whatever your decision, don't forget to set it all off with the comfort lighting package, which bathes the whole interior in a delicious LED nighttime glow. You may want to complement your trim choice with other niceties. Now, I'd want to look at this car's 14-way electrically adjustable comfort seats. Maybe also the two-part panoramic roof, the six-disc DVD changer, the TV tuner, and even a fitted compass for the fascia. And I'd certainly need the PCM, Porsche's communications management infotainment system that almost all buyers specify. Through this, you can also control an upgraded stereo system. There's a choice of two options. Now, this turbo model gets as standard the 14-speaker, 545-watt Bose surround sound setup. But if you want to go further, Porsche has developed a thumping 16-speaker Burmester system for this car with an active subwoofer and integrated Class D amplifier and a total output of over 1,000 watts. On to the dynamic options. Most will want to enjoy adaptive air suspension, something you'll certainly need if you opt for the larger 19, 20 or even 21 inch wheels. That'll give you a much firmer ride. The system works in conjunction with the PASM, Porsche Active Suspension Management electronic damping control setup and offers normal, sport and sport plus settings to vary the ride from cosseting to clinically precise. Further red mist motoring can be encouraged by optional sport chrono package that gives even sportier tuning of the engine and chassis setup along with quicker gearbox shift times and an F1 style launch control for quick getaways. Go for this and you'll also want the Porsche Torque Vectoring Plus system that works through the twisty stuff to counter both understeer and wheel spin by lightly micro-braking whichever front wheel is threatening to lose grip. Other optional driving aids include the Power Steering Plus system which increases the assistance at lower speeds to help urban-based drivers. A surround view monitor which uses four cameras to give an all-round picture of your car and its immediate surroundings.
crisp bison on headlamps that include the PDLS Porsche Dynamic Light System that turns as you do to illuminate each corner and are standard on this turbo model. And adaptive cruise control that uses a radar to speed or slow with the traffic and if necessary right down to zero and then up to speed again. Also worth considering are things like a reversing camera with functions to help hitch up a trailer and a speed limit display that pictures road signs as you pass them and displays them on the dash. Now there's also a lane change assist option that stops you from dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another car and a lane assist feature that stops dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway. These options suggest that safety is a Porsche priority, but of course, ultimately, that depends upon the person behind the wheel, which is why all buyers get a course at the Porsche Experience Centre at Silverstone to hone their skills. Now, that would be a good opportunity to see just what a difference the expensive but very desirable extra-cost PCCB Porsche Ceramic Composite Brakes make to your stopping power and to understand how best to use the almost endless selection of electronic driver aids that the brand provides to keep all of this car's power in check. Now these include the usual braking and traction assistance and the best stability control system in the business. Now if all else fails and you can't avoid an accident, twin front side and curtain airbags will spring to your aid, with rear side airbags being optional. You also get an award-winning multi-collision brake system that will automatically brake the car after a crash to reduce the chances of your vehicle going on and hitting something else. Plus, there are Isofix child seat fastenings, along with tyre pressure monitoring, a pedestrian-friendly bonnet and a hill holder clutch to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. One clever extra feature you won't want to be without is the Porsche Car Connect smartphone app, which works with both Apple and Android devices and allows you to control certain functions of your vehicle via your smartphone. Amongst other functions, this PCC system can be used to call up vehicle data and display your car's position. It can even allow you to unlock your car from anywhere in the world. PCC can also work with the PVTS Porsche Vehicle Tracking System to help recover your vehicle should it be stolen. Porsche has worked hard to improve on efficiency and part of the price premium you'd be required to pay over cars like this model's Audi Q5 Cousin can be ascribed to the use of aluminium body panels that pair 40 kilograms from the car's curb weight. The PDK gearbox uh, has also been optimized for economy at cruising speeds too, with a coasting function that decouples the engine and gearbox when you lift the throttle on motorways. As you'd expect, there is also a start-stop system to cut the engine when you don't need it, say stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights, and an active radiator grille shutter that closes to aid aerodynamics when cooling isn't needed. As a result, running costs are lower than you might expect an SUV with this kind of performance to deliver. Now, predictably, best of the bunch is the Macan S Diesel, which has an SC or Selective Catalytic Reduction System that works with a diesel particulate filter and a separate tank of what's called Add Blue solution to significantly reduce nitrogen oxide emissions. In terms of fuel and CO2 returns, this variant manages up to 46.3 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 159 grams per kilometer of CO2. Mind you, the similarly performing 237 brake horsepower petrol powered Macan gets surprisingly close to these figures, managing up to 39.2 miles per gallon and 168 grams per kilometer. That only leaves two petrol power performance variants, uh, the ones you'll probably really want. First of these is the 340 brake horsepower Macan S, which delivers up to 32.5 miles per gallon and 204 grams per kilometer. 
From here though, there's not a huge running cost penalty in stretching up to this potent 400 brake horsepower turbo model, which manages up to 31.7 miles per gallon and 208 grams per kilometer. You might notice that in each case with these figures, I've used the phrase up to. That's because the larger wheel rim sizes many owners will want will have an effect on these returns that could be up to around 5%. What else? Well, though the three-year warranty is unremarkable, the bulletproof build quality suggests that you're unlikely to need it. Insurance grouping start at 40 for the Macan S diesel, rising to 45 for the base petrol Macan and the Macan S, before topping out at group 50 for this turbo model. Oh, and if you want to justify purchase of this car to green-minded friends, it's always useful to know that at the end of its life, it will be 95% recyclable. Life intensified. According to Porsche, this is what this car is all about. It certainly intensified the whole concept of what an SUV can be. Cars of this kind, even sporting ones, are almost always born out of compromise. They might look the part, but sheer weight and size have to tell somewhere. Those issues affect a Macan too, but far less significantly than you might ever have imagined was possible with this class of car. If you need five seats, decent luggage space and go anywhere versatility, but secretly still crave that little sports car or hot hatch that you used to love so much, I can't think of anything better to recommend as a day-to-day -day choice for someone on a premium budget. This is, in summary, the car all its rivals would like to be. The car most buyers in this segment would like to have. There are, it's true, more efficient or more spacious choices in this sector. Some premium compact SUVs are better equipped or will take you further off-road. And almost all will cost slightly less. For all that though, this is an addictive package, a segment-defining car and a very desirable thing indeed.